I started skydiving in 1980. I started base jumping in 1982, July the 22nd. <laughs> <laughs> I have about nine and a half thousand skydives. Yeah. And just over 1,400 base jumps. Because we didn't have any, so we had to build them. And I started when we were jumping skydiving equipment. And I had already made my own base, I had already made, built my own parachute because I knew how to sew. And I was working with a parachute company building round parachutes. And after hours, they gave me the key to the door to build my own parachute. So I built a square parachute, I copied a square parachute. And I used it for skydiving, for crew, and for base jumping. And then one day we were had a group of base jumpers together like this, and we it was in the evening, and we were all together. And I said, "Hey, we all need base jumping parachutes, not skydiving parachutes for a base." And I said, "I can build them because I'm built mine. So what do we want in a base jumping parachute?" And everybody gave me about a page and a half of things we needed specific for base jumping. And I went, whoa, this is going to, I'm going to be busy. Yeah. And my friend said, do you want help with that? And he was already building the containers. And that was Todd Shubatham. And I said, yeah, I need help with this. So we started and we built the first space jumping parachute. It was Great. the Fox. Yeah. And that was in, we built the first one in 1991. My one, I had been jumping since 1986. Your prototype? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how many parachutes have you stitched so far? Or oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> okay. Um, basically, the the finesse of the construction. It, it just needs to be perfect, basically. Um, and of course, if, when it is perfect, then it looks perfect. A lot of people first just see maybe the stitches and everything but it, it just needs to be a hundred percent perfect really and then all the dimensions come into play and the parachute comes out symmetrical and the customer is happy so you don't cut any corners okay you know? oh yeah yeah generally it's me too okay. they go here try this okay, <laughs> <I> go, okay. <laughs> you're the guinea pig <laughs> yeah. Oh no, Steve is sometimes too, but okay. he's like, here, go test jump this, or try this, or, this is a good idea. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> With our innovations, because we built the tailgate, and we were first to build the um, VTEC, the mesh on the bottom. And with those two specifically, um, we used the tailgate. We couldn't use the airplane because it was a different arena. We didn't want slider up with 80 knots, so we needed to use a base jump. So we had a local base jump that we used a dummy. We yes. carried a dummy, we pulled the dummy up, and we threw the dummy off several times. Okay. So we did that, and then when that works, and we study the video of it, take it back, and then um, when we're happy with that, then we'll jump ourselves on it. And then we keep it inside the shop ourselves all the time. 
uh, and then you do kind of what's called beta testing and then you send it out to specific other people to get their information or their input as well and then um, you can let it out to everybody else. So, but yeah, we're always the first ones. Or our dummy. <laughs> but other times we, um, when it doesn't have anything to do with the opening procedure, uh, we can use an aeroplane. Yeah, and our drop zone is very close, it's Paris Valley, and they're very supportive of us and we can jump the, our gear. We have to be legal, we have to put yes. it in the skydiving equipment, but we can jump our gear, our parachutes, you know, from the altitudes we choose. Okay. Yeah. APAC, the biggest manufacturer for parachute based on the year.